There is this website that not only won site of the day back in April, but also picked up the developer award. For some reason, it's been slipping past the channel till now, but I knew I had to cover it eventually. As you would expect from a site like that, the animations are top tier across the board, but one section in particular stood out to me. It features this impressive sticky card effect, a scroll experience we have seen on a lot of award winning sites done in different ways. We have actually built similar effects here on the channel before, but those were mostly done in plain JavaScript. But a few weeks ago, I decided to recreate a similar scroll experience, but this time using Next.js instead. So I thought now would be the perfect time to share it with you, especially if you are curious how to build a reusable sticky card system that maps directly from a data array. Once it's set up, you can just drop in your content and have all the cards animate automatically, no extra config needed. In this video, I'll walk you through my process of building this entire scroll interaction from scratch, step by step. And if you'd like to see more animations like this built with Next.js in future videos, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project, plus hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's get into the code. I've got a fresh Next.js app up and running just to save us a bit of setup time. I've already installed Lennis and G's app, which we'll bring in later once we get to the animation part. For now, let's start by giving the page some structure. I'm going to add two sections, an intro and an outro, just to build a little bit of visual storytelling around the scroll experience. This helps the sticky behavior pop a lot more instead of it just floating on a blank page. In each section, I'm just dropping in an H1 with some placeholder text for now, nothing fancy. That's pretty much it on the layout side. Next, let's move on into the global styling and set up some base styles for the layout and common elements like headings and text. At the very top, I've already imported the Mandro font from Google Fonts and I've defined a couple of custom CSS variables for background and foreground colors. We'll use this throughout the page to keep things flexible. Then, I'm starting with a basic reset. I'm removing all default margin and padding from every element and setting box sizing to border box. Next, I'm styling the body. I'm applying the Mandro font across the entire site and setting the background color to pure black for now. For images, I'm making sure they fill their containers completely while keeping their proportions intact using object fit cover. Then, I'll set up some base typography. Headings use a large, bold style with tight letter spacing and line height just to make them feel strong and structured on screens. Paragraphs are slightly smaller and lighter but still clear and readable. For the section layout, I am giving each one full viewport height so it fills the screen. Then I am using flexbox to center the content inside, in this case just an H1, both vertically and horizontally. That's what creates the big full screen title movements at the top and bottom of the page. Finally, I have added a media query to scale down the heading and paragraph styles on smaller screens so the layout stays readable and looks balanced on mobile. Next, inside the source directory, I am going to create a new folder called components and within that, I will add another folder named sticky cards. This is where we will keep all the logic and styles for our sticky card animation, keeping things organized and modular. Inside sticky cards folder, I am creating two files, sticky cards CSX, which will hold all our animation and component logic and sticky card CSS for all the styling related to the card layout, visuals and responsive tweaks. Now. Let's start by setting up the base component. In sticky cards JSX, I'm importing the CSS file right at the top so we can style things as we build. For now, I'm returning a simple div with the class of sticky cards. This will be our main wrapper for everything inside. Nothing is happening yet, but this gives us the structure to work with. Now, before we start adding content, let's get this component rendering on the page so we can preview changes live. So I'll go to the home page and I'll import this component at the top and drop it in just below the intro section. You won't see anything for now since the div's still empty but that's expected. Let's move on and start building the cards inside. To start, I'll paste in array of objects where each object represents one card in the experience. Each card includes four main things, an index number, a title, an image path and a description as you can see. Also, just so you know, I've already placed the images inside the public folder in a subfolder called sticky cards, so the image paths here will work without any issues. Now to render all of these on the page, I'm mapping over the sticky cards data array. 
Inside the map, I return a div with the class sticky card and I also give it a key using the index. From here, I break the card into two main sections, the left side which shows the index number and the right side which contains all the actual content. So first, inside this div with the class sticky card index, I simply drop in an h1 that renders the index from our data, for example, 1, 2 and so on. Then comes the main content area. Inside this div called sticky card content, I wrap everything in one more container called sticky card content wrapper. This inner wrapper is where the layout and width will be controlled for all the content on the right. Inside the wrapper, I first drop in an h1 with the class sticky card header. This renders the card title. Right below that, I have a div with the class sticky card image and inside that, I am rendering an image tag that uses the image field from our data array. This will show the visual for each card and because we are using relative parts from public, no import is needed. And finally, we set up the copy block at the bottom. I wrap that in a div called sticky card copy which I split into two columns. The first one is sticky card copy title where I am just placing a simple placeholder text for now. And next to it, we have the actual description inside a div called sticky card copy description. This is where we drop the paragraph from our data and each card will automatically get its own copy. So with that, our markup is done. We have got each card generated dynamically from the data array and structured properly for styling and scroll animation. Now let's move on and actually style these cards. All of our styles are going into a dedicated file sticky card css which we already imported into the component earlier we'll start with the wrapper the outer container that holds all the cards it's set to take up the full width and height of the page and inherits the dark background color from the root variable each card inside that is designed to take up the full viewport height so as you scroll only one card is in focus at a time we use flexbox for the layout with spacing between the left and right sides and we have also added will change transform to optimize for smoother animations later on when we bring in gzap now here is an important bit. Every card has a dark overlay layered on top of it using a pseudo element. This is a trick I like using when I want a fading effect without actually changing the card's opacity. Because if we fade the whole card out directly, the previous card underneath starts to show through and that ruins the visual layering. So instead, I fade in a black overlay on top. It makes the card look like it's fading out but everything underneath stays hidden. We'll control the opacity of that overlay using a CSS variable and we'll animate that later with GZAP. I also added a tiny transition to keep the fade smooth. It doesn't interfere with any mouse interactions and sits above the content with a slightly higher Z index. Now let's break down the layout inside each card. The index on the left takes up a smaller portion while the content section on the right gets more space. We give that content area a bit of top padding to breathe. Inside the content, we wrap everything into a single vertical column with some spacing between the title, image and the text block. The title is slightly narrower than the full width so it doesn't stretch across. The image is set to maintain a 5 by 3 aspect ratio just to keep the layout clean and consistent regardless of the image size. The final part of the layout is the copy section. It includes two columns, a smaller label on the left and the actual description on the right. We give the label less space and style it with uppercase and bold to create a nice contrast against the body text. Then finally, we make everything responsive. On screens below 1000 pixels, the card layout switches to vertical. The left and right sections stack on top of each other. We remove the horizontal gaps and adjust the widths so everything fits better on mobile. And that wraps up the styling setup. Next, we'll move on to scroll logic and animation. Let's start setting up the animation logic. At the very top of the file, I've added use client directive. This is required in any file where we use client side hooks like use ref or use gsap in the Next.js 13 plus app. Since all components are rendered on the server by default, this tells Next.js that this specific file should run on the client. Next, we bring in a few imports. From React, I import use ref. 
will use this to define a scope container, basically a DOM reference that tells GSAP where our animations should leave and what elements it should be aware of. Then we import GSAP along with the scroll trigger plugin. As you know, scroll trigger lets us tie animations to scroll behavior, which is essential for the sticky card effect. We also import use GSAP hook from GSAP's React build. This hook is how we run all our GSAP code inside React in a clean and safe way. It ensures animations are scoped, don't leak across renders, and are fully lifecycle aware. Right after the imports, I register the scroll trigger plugin. Then I set up a use ref and call it container. This will be our scope, a reference to the top level div that wraps the cards. Inside the JSX, I attach that ref to the wrapper div. And finally, I initialize use gsap. I pass it a callback function where all our animations will go and also an options object where we pass in the scope, which is that same container ref. This keeps everything localized to just this component. With this setup, we are ready to build the actual scroll interaction. Let's move to that next. First, we select all the elements with the class name sticky card. This gives us an array of all card sections we have created. Now we loop through each of those cards, but we skip the very last one on purpose because we don't want the last card to be pinned. If we pinned the last card, there wouldn't be any scroll trigger after it to unpin it. So they would just stay frozen at the top of the screen and that would completely break the effect. So we only pin cards that have another card after them. Here is what happens when we pin each of those. As soon as the top of a card hits the top of the viewport, it gets pinned in place. It stays stuck there while the rest of the content continues to scroll above it and it remains pinned until we reach the very last card in the list. That's the end trigger. This setup creates a seamless stacked effect. Each card overlaps the previous one as you scroll and they slide in one after the other without any weird spacing issues. Also we turn off pin spacing which just makes sure the layout stays tight and doesn't add any unnecessary height between cards. So again, we are pinning all cards except the last one. Each one holds until the final card arrives and we maintain a clean layout using this logic. Now we are moving on to the second part of our scroll trigger logic where we animate the cards as the next one starts entering. So again, we are checking that the current card is not the last one because we only want to apply this animation to cards that have another card coming in after them. Here is what we are doing. We create another scroll trigger, but this one is tied to the next card in the list. We use the next card as the trigger. That means the animation for the current card will play as the next card scrolls into view. Now let's break down the animation itself. As the next card scrolls in from the bottom of the screen to the top, we track the scroll progress using the on update callback. This gives us a value from 0 to 1, depending on how far we have scrolled. We use that progress to drive three visual effects on the current card. First, we slightly scale it down, starting at full size and shrinking by up to 25% as the next card overlaps. This gives it a subtle zoom out effect. Second, we rotate the card just a few degrees, either clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on the card's index. So odd numbered cards tilt one way, even numbered cards tilt the other way. This alternating rotation gives the whole interaction more character and playfulness, just like the inspiration. And third, we adjust the opacity of the dark overlay. We set up earlier with the CSS variable. We are not actually fading out the card itself. We are just fading in a dark transparent layer on top of it. This avoids seeing the other cards shine through and gives a clean fading illusion as the stack builds up. All of this is applied using GSAP's set method, which means we are setting these styles directly on the fly every time the scroll updates. So in short, as each new card scrolls into view, the one before it zooms out, tilts slightly and fades into the background, making room for the next one to take over. It's a small animation, but together that really elevate the whole experience. Now that the core scroll animation is working, there is just one last piece I want to add to polish it up. Right now, the scroll behavior is a little abrupt. So to make things smoother and more fluid, I'm going to use Lenis. If you haven't used it before, Lenis is a lightweight library that lets you apply buttery smooth scroll behavior across your site. Since I already installed it earlier, I'm now going to bring in the React wrapper called React Lenis. This lets us use Lenis in a Next.js app in a super clean way. So I'll head to the home page and simply drop in the React Lenis component at the top of our layout. That's it. It doesn't interfere with our scroll trigger setup and works perfectly with the pinned elements like we have here. Once it's in place, the scroll experience just feels more refined with less jitter, smoother transitions and an overall better feel. Alright, that's everything for setup. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.